Hey everyone, this is Zeolith. So just a few days ago I uploaded a video in which I said the following about James Bond 25's production issues. And I'm frankly terrified that Eon is going to bring back Neil Purvis and Robert Wade as writers, two names that have grown to hate seeing in the credits. No! God! No! God! Please no! 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 20 years. 20 fucking years. First off, and I apologize in advance that this is just reiterating a lot of points from my previous rant. I have to address the entire premise here. Why does Bond 25 need salvaging? This isn't a dance with dragons where George R. R. Martin wrote himself into a tangled knot of a million subplots he couldn't figure out how to properly intersect and reconcile. This is a James Bond movie. A movie series that, at least for about four decades, did just fine, putting out a bi-yearly two-hour action-adventure movie about a globe-trotting, gambling, womanizing secret agent with a Walther PPK and a cool car who took on colorful villains? Why is this fucking thing getting stuck in narrative knots? James Bond video game writers have done just fine with this formula in games like Nightfire and Everything or Nothing. Why has this become so difficult and elusive that they need to rehire the hacks who gave us Die Another Day, Quantum of Solace, and Spectre? said hacks having now worked on the series for, again, 20 years. It's a rhetorical question, because I actually do know why. Casino Royale. The best Bond film of the last 20 years, and personally one of my 10 favorite films of this century so far. Casino Royale was a masterpiece. And yes, Purvis and Wade played some role in that, piggybacking very heavily off of Ian Fleming's original text, with Paul Haggis also writing, and of course Martin Campbell directing. It's a rich, thrilling, mysterious, atmospheric, exciting, phenomenally entertaining Bond film, and received the critical acclaim to match. But that's where the problem started. Because sometimes, poison tastes great going down. That's why people eat fucking chocolate cake until their bodies go to ruin. And Casino Royale, with a decade plus retrospect, was supremely decadent chocolate cake. It tasted amazing going down, but man did it fuck up the James Bond movie series. You see, what should have happened after Casino Royale is what happened after Ian Fleming's original Casino Royale novel and his follow-ups, Live and Let Die, Moonraker, Diamonds Are Forever, and so on. The character of James Bond, now successfully introduced, grown into his role and given an emotional backstory, should have launched into a series of thrilling, standalone, episodic adventures going up against a variety of colorful, megalomaniacal villains. We should have gotten to see Daniel Craig in the equivalence of a Goldfinger, or He Only Live Twice, or Live and Let Die, perhaps introducing some gentle serialized elements through Mr. White's organization and Bond's relationship with M, and so on. But Eon and Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson were immediately addicted to that hit, that thrill of critical acclaim they got from Casino Royale, and they chased the series right on down that rabbit hole with the guidance of none other than Neil Purvis and Robert Wade. Pump up the grittiness, pump up the politics, pump up the going rogue, pump up the personal connections. More murky, more serious, more like Jason Bourne. And admittedly this worked in Skyfall with the help of John Logan's scripting and Roger Deakins' cinematography. But you know where it really didn't work is in Spectre. I don't want to see M grappling with the shutdown of MI6 again. I don't want to see you try to convince me that Bond and this chick are in love and I don't want to see some Foster Brother twist soap opera bullshit. And now after that film's warranted lukewarm reception they've gotten themselves stuck in yet another panicked rut of wanting some fucking relevance or whatever. Because God knows the reason The Spy Who Loved Me is an immortal and iconic Bond classic is because of its commentary on Watergate and Vietnam, and pulled the same two writers back in yet again. So yeah, after four years of trying to get this together and give us something, anything else, get ready for another Bond movie with all the following elements. Needless serialization. Bond goes rogue. This time it's personal. A villain with a connection to Bond's past. Political subplots. The MI6 regulars in the field. And people who have more of a vague, crowdsourced idea of Ian Fleming's original Bond novels rather than an actual strong understanding of the text might claim this is more Fleming-esque, but it's really not. There were two major personal stories for Bond and Fleming. The original Casino Royale, which as I've said was adapted excellently, and the two-parter of Honor Majesty's Secret Service and You Only Live Twice near the end of Fleming's original run. But in between those, the series was, yes, largely standalone spy adventure stories about Bond matching wits with and taking down colorful villains like Auric Goldfinger, Hugo Drax, Mr. Big, and Dr. No. He even got to prevent nuclear disaster on a couple occasions, literally directing a nuclear missile away from London at the last second in Fleming's Moonraker. That's Fleming-esque. Not political subplots and connections from the past. 
that stuff is all Purvis and Wade. I will happily debate anyone that while they might have added in gadgets and one-liners and whatnot, some of the supposedly sillier mid-series Roger Moore entries absolutely reflect the structure and formula of Fleming's original novels far, far more than Spectre does. It's just amazing to me that such a strong, classic, long-lived, iconic, and yes, profitable IP has been mismanaged to this degree, less talked about by younger generations these days, not just compared to box office top dogs like Star Wars and superheroes, but even less than like a few literal fucking BBC shows. Amazing that they have twice now, in Casino Royale and Skyfall, set this character up in a perfect place to give us a few classic Bond adventures with Daniel Craig and whiffed it both times, both whiffs being followed by ludicrous four-year gaps of no Bond films. Like a mediocre actor who yields gold given the right, very specific material, Neil Purvis and Robert Wade have, with great guidance, in one case from Ian Fleming himself, been involved in a couple of great films over a couple of decades. But unique talents they are not, and Ian or Barbara Broccoli or whoever absolutely must stop rehiring them. Hell, Michael G. Wilson himself wrote for Four Your Eyes Only, Octopussy, A View to a Kill, The Living Daylights, and License to Kill. Can he not take a crack at this? Can anyone else not take a crack at this? Bruce Feirstein? Can they not just use John Hodge's original Danny Boyle script? But no, we're gonna have to hear from Bond 25's villain about how he turned to a life of evil because Q cut him in line at the Apple Store in 2003 and this time it's personal. Seriously, Eon, you are trying to squeeze blood from two stones named Neil Purvis and Robert Wade. Stop it. Hire another writer, please. Eh, that's all. Thanks for listening. Talk to y'all later.